You in Spacey Wolf Squadron. This is your Wolf Commander Wolf 10. You're a werewolf. Back again for the week of all weeks, the holiday week. But we're not talking about the holidays this time on Tuesday, everyone. We're talking about romance and fiction. What are, your, what are some of your favorites in romance? Your tro From your tropes to your cliches to your worst instances of romance in fiction the types of romance that, that you that you dig if there's a romance subplot that comes in to your favorite stories we'll be talking about how to write at least decent romance subplots and stories we'll be talking about how you can botch it from dialogue to actions of characters. We even go over to some of the ones that are more populated in the medium nowadays that is confused as to being romance or some behavioral patterns that one considers to be romantic in nature when it's really uh, an abuser in disguise. So let me welcome to the chat for the first time, Matt Nui. He was here, I believe, two nights ago, maybe. I'm assuming. He's been waiting here for quite a while to be be a uh, part of this uh this little shindig we having tonight. We also have Doctor Y Designs Network for the first time, maybe, or maybe the second time in this stream. We have also my wingman, Brian Gilmar, and my other wingman, Leia Plus Size. Welcome, welcome, guys. Let me go over what, what I like to, uh, what I like in, uh, my kind of romance, or at least what I like to see when, when it comes to, uh, romance subplots or romance and fiction. Then, like the ones that, that were, you know, you, you have the, uh, your, your typical basic, uh, Oh, we also have Melissa Harris, but she won't be with us for a while, as usual. She's got her own things to do, but that's okay. And I'm looks like she's got her channel back, it seems, or maybe she's rebuilt her uh channel. So if you did, congratulations. Back to what I was saying, I kind of like the uh, romance that's your your typical uh guy meets girl, girl meets meets guy, guy likes girl, guy like guy likes. Girl likes guy. They have ways of uh of complimenting each other. They come together on certain things, and oh, and they uh they have a a, a sense of uh connection, if you will. I was like the ones where opposites attract. You got the guy who who can't stand the girl and the girl can't stand the guy, but at the end of the day, they find common ground and they then eventually come together. You guys probably know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Then I have the ones where they are, uh, there's the ones where they're, they're, uh, they're complete strangers, to, strangers, so to speak, but they know each other, know of each other. And it's because of their whole free spiritness and, and, and spirituality that, that brings them together in many ways. I'm gonna go, go with the uh, opposite of track first because I'm a, I like to highlight the couple that I like when you have that um, that dynamic Han Solo and Princess Leia in Star Star Wars. I'm referring mostly to uh, Empire Strikes Back, where it, um, obviously, their 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 whole connection started with, when it came to um, a new hope, but you got in full force in, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, where Leia Leia plays the the diplomatic uh, leader majority of the uh, the first half of the film. Of course, you got the uh, Battle of Hoth that happened, and she's out of her depth at this point when uh, Han gets off the planet. And it's just her, 3PO, and Chewbacca 
are running from the empire, but to break away that uh the high speed nonstop actiony uh bit of the adventure, you get segments where they where where Han is just really just laying in to to uh to try to woo her in, trying to get her to admit that she has some sort of feelings to, towards uh Han. Of course, you had had Leia playing off that, um, try, trying to rebuff his uh his advances and, and his uh his assumptions, where we got that little fake out where where she uh kisses Luke. <laughs> I will not be hearing any incest jokes in the comments, please, you perverts. Control your hormones. But that's besides the point. You have the um, you have. You even have the the, the uh, scene where they actually kiss each other, they kiss each other for the first time in the um, in the Falcon, and she still can't bring herself to uh to admit her uh, love for Han at least until when you get to the when you get to Cloud City and you get the scene where, where Han is torturing. And that's all they hear is is his screaming. And of course, you get to the penultimate culmination of their love, considering how how they uh, share conversation with each other before he uh, inevitably gets frozen in carbonite. And you get that iconic line from the ex- the exchange I mean between Han and Leia. Where she says, I love you. And Han answers back with, I know. And of course, it doesn't really, their, their romance does not get some minute there, but their, their, their admittance of love, their, their declaration of love was brought to the forefront in that movie. So it's a it's a three parter to how their how their uh their romance began. You got you got the whole teasing aspect of their uh, courtship in New Hope. Then you have the the second base sort of speak. Man, I don't know what are you talking about? <laughs> Anyways, uh. Yeah, you get to um, Empire, you get into that, that, that second courtship. And then you get into the um, you get into Return of the Jedi where things get a little bit complicated where they try to tease the whole fact that there might be a, a, a love triangle between um, Han, Leia, and Luke. But Luke is not really about the whole look looking to uh, court Leia at this point. Luke was already on his adventure in Empire Strikes, Strikes Back when he's doing his training on Dagobah, and then he goes to uh, help his friends. And yeah, I kind of figured that, man, knew he. But yeah, where where he's training with uh, Yoda, he goes to fight Darth Vader, or at least he goes there to to uh, save his friends because because of the visions, of course. But then he fight, fights Darvera and ultimately loses. But at that point, when when uh, they go to rescue Han, there's never really a connection of of a, a chance of romance between Leia and Luke. Whereas Han kind kind of brings it up, you know, because of the exchange between Luke and Leia talking about their parents, and uh, Leia's now emotionally. Uh, Distressed, and that's where um, that's where that's where Han kind of like gets gets it gets a little hot head a bit. Now he's not he's not com- particularly in the wrong for pro- provoking that uh pro- provoking further that emotion that com- that confusion. He's a bit he's a bit curious. He you know he wants to know what's what's going on between her Luke and Han. But here's one thing that I gotta uh, give uh, George on 
especially when we know he cannot write romance for a lick of it. He still managed to write the uh, characters as professional uh, soldiers. They still, they're still, their their heads are still in the game. They're still, they're still um, out there fighting the empire on the last, on the last uh, stretch in the war with the new, newly uh, the in progress building of the second Death Star. Long story short, you uh, get this exchange from uh, Han and Leia, where. He assumes that she still likes Luke. But I got to give Han this where he shows a bit of maturity about his uh about if she cho- chose Luke. Ha- had she chose Luke, he would have stepped out of the way. That now that's maturity right there. I, I got to give Han that. He's like it's like when he when he gets back, I won't get in the way. I was like huh. So it, even if he, even if he uh if that would end up with Luke, which wouldn't have made sense, it, it really would, truth be told, it would not have made sense for, for her to end up with Luke at the end of Return of the Jedi because there was never a, a chance of them talking to each other that much to warrant them to be together. We all can see that if we don't see no, no real connection between her and Luke, how she ended up with Luke in the first place. But like I said, even if it would go that route, and Han said that he said I won't get in the way. I was like, that's some maturity from Han Solo himself. He's like, he's not going to get in the way. He's not going to co- complicate things. She knows where her heart belongs to if she chose Luke. But no, she says he's my brother, and she kisses him. He she kisses uh, Han Solo, and, and, and Han is still baffled by, by by what she said. <laughs> he says brother. And he just he's got this confused look. <laughs> I still I still love that scene. But that's what that's one of my favorite ro- romance uh, couples in uh, movies. By the way, there's also uh, Rick o- Rick O'Connell and um, E. Ham Ham Hammond from the Mummy uh, franchise, the '90s Mummy franchise. Those were opposites too. You got Rick O'Connor as being the um, I have to say swashbuckler, but he's not a pirate per se. He's more of an adventurer. Hit him and his uh I guess his military friends when they were excavating uh Hamanatra and defending that uh position from ruffians and 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 and, and what's that word? Bandits and, and marauders. Then you have Evie being the um, the bookworm or, or the bookworm librarian, and <laughs> you got some comments that I want to dig into pretty soon, but we're not at the uh, the thirty mark, so I'm going to keep talking. But yeah, Rick O'Connell and um, Evie ha- Hammond. Now this is this is one of my favorite. These are also one of my favorite uh, opposite of track. Uh, type of uh, romances again adventurer gunslinger uh bookworm liber- librarian doesn't read really see eye to eye first impression was he stole a kiss from her without her consent mind you <laughs> from, from, from behind bars to, to to add she and she only uh recruits him because he knows how to get to Hamanatra because that's where the Book of the Dead that they're looking for, or at least Pharaoh said he's a uh, treasury it is a uh, hidden Hamanatra. They they wanted to go there to see the dead to uh, I think it was called the Sea of the Dead. I I could be wrong, but she wanted to go there to explore and, and find out what was it that um, why why the um, the curator wants um. Not necessarily find out what, why the curator wants to uh, keep, keep her away from it. She wants to journey there because of uh, mystery and and possible, in the case of uh, Jonathan, her brother, possible riches and, and getting rich off of their uh, excavation. So, then what are you doing here, Brian? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I see his comment. <laughs> 
I'm, okay, I'll, I'll read this kind of for for sake of context. Immediately, romance isn't my forte, so it's hard for me to pick a favorite role. Bruh, there, bruh, the carpet is la laid out for you. You should know what's your, if, if you like, if you like a couple well enough, that is your favorite romance. <laughs> or at least your f favorite romance couple. Uh, you guys slay me sometimes with your comments. <laughs> Bro, you have a favorite. You just can't remember at the moment. <laughs> Y'all still talk about Han and Leia. Oh man, I I walked into that one. As soon as I talk about Star Wars, y'all gonna y'all gonna uh, you know, y'all fly out the handle for it. But I'm okay with that. Don't kid yourself, Matt Nui. You do have a couple in that you like. You're just not gonna admit it. You sour puss. Let me continue with Evie and um and Rick. So they. You, we all know their story. They journey to Hamanatra, awaken a two a two thousand year old mummy. Rick saves the day, of course, saves her life. You know, obviously they they um the lens that he went for that one. He ends up he doesn't really end up confessing his love to her, but like at the end of the day, they kiss. They they already connected so much so that they were able to get married and sired a son who pretty much got the best of both worlds from both of his family one uh, one his uh his book bookworm and know-how from his mother and his can-do attitude and, and uh action orient oriented uh endeavors from his father but that's a, that's another couple that i, that I love the most in, in fiction is rick o'connor and, and uh and Evie Hampton, and I, I always like the um, I always like the uh, first mummy the best. The second mummy is is okay, but the third mummy I, I outright hate. But I will say this: that even though it's dry, Evie and um and Rick's uh relationship is still there. It's just it's the fact that the new actress did not click well for me for uh. For Evie to, to play as Evie, and and I understand why because of how she's written in that in Tomb of the da Dragon Emperor is the fact that yeah you know of course there's Beauty and the Beast, Belle and the Beast, the opposites attract still going with the opposites attract a uh, trope. You got the um the story, of course, the, the foundational story that um brings up that brings the two together, which is the beast is, is kind of a an a hole, and he has to learn learn a bit of humility and and to be a little bit nicer. Then you got Bill, who's basically the incor incorruptible beauty that tames the beast within the um of course within the man. Of course, we all like to make that joke about the whole Stockholm syndrome, which. Let it be a joke, guys, because most people t tend to uh, take take that joke as literal. They they don't they don't think Belle fell in love with the beast. They just think she has Stockholm syndrome. There was never a moment where he ever tortured her. Let alone, hey, Damien X two two four seven, welcome, welcome. But uh, there was never a moment where, where Belle was ever tortured by the beast nor was was did he ever mistreat her he, i mean grant he did keep her in the cell for at least a night but then he uh he let her out gave her a guest room I'm not saying he was buying he was trying to obviously 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 uh you could say he was trying to buy, buy her uh her her affection for a time like like making her dinner giving her a guest room but over time especially after he saves her from the wolves when, when he when he kicks her out, out of the um the castle because of course she went to a place where she's not supposed to go he obviously told her not to go but like 
that's when they start connecting. It's not. It's not. A, it's that's what. That's where they like once. Once she starts treating his wounds after the uh, scuffle, that's where they start connecting. And that's when he's. That's when they start to see each other for what they really are. Like the the uh, the compassion from uh, Bell brought the compassion of the beast. Yeah, yeah, Brian. I was I was bringing that up because I I heard it in in a, in a, a former circle that, that I used to uh hang around with in, in uh, college. They 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 always <laughs> they they said they always make this joke. Uh, Stockholm Central disguised as a romance story. I'm like, I'm like, uh, I don't think so, guys. I really don't think so. You guys have some sick minds. <laughs> but there's that, of course. Uh, going on with going on with Disney yet again. No, Matt knew he, he didn't become a beast again in the next movie. That was a prequel. That was a prequel. Or at least that was a prequel in the middle of the film. It was a, it was a it was a different story in the middle of a film. Sorry, I didn't mean to pause real. Doctor, I'll I'll get to that comment when 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 I actually go directly into uh, reading your comments. It's twenty minute March. Should I go further? I should go further. I should keep going. I'll stop when we hit the thirty. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, so let me get off of obviously the track session and go with the um. I will say this is one um, romance trope that I, that I kind of um, am, am I'm glad that doesn't really get much um, attention like it used to. Love at first sight. Well, it gets it gets attention, yes, but that's mostly that's mostly the hallmarks uh, formula, the hallmark movies formula when it comes to the romance, the love at first sight where. Where people where people see each other for the first time and and they instantly are like spitting with each other, it happens in real life. Make no mistake about that, guys. Sometimes it happens in real life. Sometimes for the better. Sometimes it leads to disastrous results because most people are are under that impression with the, with the fancy that love at first sight means you found your soulmate. Not all, not necessarily the truth. Not always the case. But it does happen. That no, make no mistake about it. Just because it, it's uh, it's in a movie does not mean love at first sight does not happen in real life. It trust me, it does. I can't give give uh, full examples of how that happens or when it happens, but it does. And again, sometimes it works. Uh, it works well, and most times it ends in disaster. And that's only because most. Most time they they're um, usually people are are in love with the idea with the, of the person that they fall in love like quickly with. They're in love they're in love with the uh, person, but they never uh, get into the uh, get to know that person yet. So we we have Snow White and the Prince, which Snow White and the Seven Doors love at first sight. It's funny that that she uh, runs into a guy. Out of the blue, it doesn't really go. The guy doesn't even go through the standard procedure of of, uh, of asking the woman's hand in marriage to the uh, parent, the parental figure, i.e., the uh, wicked queen, of course, or the father, the 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 lack of a father, the king, which is interesting. But again, they're in love. They don't. She don't know anything about this guy. It's it's kind of funny that that he that he's not the hero, but he is the one that that uh, saves Snow White in the end. It's, it's really the dwarves that are the heroes, but other than that, it's like 
Uh, that's a good comment, uh, Manoli. I knew you guys were going to be very, very worthy with this stream. And that's a good thing. We do need to talk about this. <laughs> but yeah, there's also, um, huh. I like that Dr. Y brought up uh, Sleeping Beauty because I, Pretty sure that they were supposed to be uh, in the case of Sleeping Beauty, guys. Aurora and um, what's his name? What's the prince name? Y'all tell me in the comments. The prince name. I'm going for for the sake of uh, for the sake of naming, I'll call him the prince. But Aurora and the prince were betrothed in that movie. They they were, or at least they were arranged to be betrothed, which is which nobody really brings up. Nobody really brings that up. Philip, yeah, Prince Philip. Nobody ever brings that up when they when they bring up uh, romance and, and Sleeping Beauty. They were actually uh, in the case of Sleeping Beauty, Philip and Aurora were arranged. Most people tend to forget that the Kings have that one duet song, the one where they're drinking at night. Aurora's dad and, and Philip's dad is talking. They were they were planning to arrange them to be married. It was if let's just say this, guys. Even if they didn't fall in love within that movie, they were going to get married. If not if not fall if not through falling in love, their dads wanted to arrange their marriage anyways. So so it's it's kind of weird when you when you really bring real life into that like like you know that royalty arranged marriages for either political gains or or military gain or or mil military advancements and stuff like we we know what it was like way back then in the middle of the times when it came to marriage marriage was, was a sacred thing but at the same time it was also and we have my other wingman <laughs> oh let's start with the that's an interesting comment, Owen. <laughs> I sure hope you didn't come here thinking I'm going to give dating advice again. <laughs> after, I gave, gave it like, after I gave it like in one stream, I don't remember which one, but I remember giving, giving such a stream. <laughs> If nothing else, Owen, it's gonna be interesting to talk about. But uh back to what I was saying, like like yeah, a lot of people don't point out that Philip and Aurora were gonna get married either way, whether they're gonna fall in love out out, out of accident ac ac accidentally. It's they're gonna get married because it was arranged, they were betrothed. The same thing with Derek and um well what was interesting about the Swan Princess I will give Swan Princess this. The Swan Princess subverted. <laughs> I'm joking, Owen. I'm joking. <laughs> In the case of Swan Princess, the two took tucked off my um my opposites attract uh troll that I love. But what was interesting was the fact that they were still arranged to be married, and Derek blew it big time in that movie when he says, "Like this, it's kind of interesting with Swan Princess when when um when when Odette and uh Derek first meet each other. They they start by uh hating each other outright as kids do, boy and girl competition hate each other and all that stuff." And it, which is interesting about um, Odette. Odette is a tomboy. Odette is a tomboy. You got you guys. If you guys haven't seen Swan Princess, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Odette is a tomboy. Despite w what she wears, despite how she looks, how she acts, she's a tomboy to a T. She actually fires a slingshot 
at both uh, Derek and Braun when when they're teenagers, and she chucks and, and like a boss, and like a boss, she chucks that slingshot to the side. <laughs> she dunked on them. Uh, Damien, I already talked about uh, Rick and uh, Evie, Evie from uh, Mummy, uh, from the Mummy uh, remake, the '99 remake. And I, I I loved uh I love that couple, I definitely do, but um like I said Derek blew blew it because uh <laughs> Derek Derek blows it because uh the moment he uh he sees her <laughs> plump now <laughs> he caught feelings. But he was mostly catching feelings because he was infatuated by her looks, and she was asking him. You know, hey, uh, that's nice that you like me for how, how beautiful I am, but what else? What else is there? <laughs> even, even Derek's Alfred is like, <laughs> like even even Derek's uh, Alfred is saying like, hey, dude, come on, tell t- what what else? There, there's got to be more than just, just looks, man. <laughs> He just looks at her and just says, "What else is there?" It's like, like, oh, bruh, bruh, you're so dense. Swan Princess is one of my favorites out of the, out of the non-princess uh, movies. Only, only uh, ruined by the sequels that came after because when you look at the sequels, the Swan, the Swan Princess sequels, Derek just gets dumber and. Dumber each film. Each film he has to learn the exact same, almost the exact same lesson that, that he had to learn from the first movie, which is not be be a just basically not be a, a total guy. Which is his first mistake was he just like he just like Odette because of her looks, but now he's like really like once 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 Odette has been kidnapped, he begins to learn her value. Outside of just her looks, you know. Then the um, I think the second movie he um, right, he kept um a specific orb that that uh, like on the Rothbert kept to um say say the forbidden arts in, and this is this is kind of. Stu- I, I will say this. This is the dumbest thing. Was it? No, I don't think it's. Was it the? Hmm. Yeah, I think I think she got mad at him because because he still kept each sequel. It was the same. It was the same. It was the same uh situation where he kept keeping evidence that of the of the forbidden arts. The first, the, the second movie, it was the it was the orb. In the third movie, it was the notes that um that uh Rothbard's uh, apprentice that we never knew about Zelda took notes of, and he still. Ca- I'm like, bruh, you ain't learned your lesson in the in the second movie. Oh, hey there, sound engraver. This is interesting because I actually predicted that Sound Gray would, would one day pop up into one of my streams. And this is unexpected, but it's also welcomed. Now you fi- now you finally heard my uh catchphrase. And uh is there anything you want to add to, to the uh Oh no, she, you're not staying too long. But hey there, Sound Engraver. Man, that's I'm feeling warm inside. One of our, one of our, one of our uh, big greats are, has graced us. <laughs> and I usually lecture at this time, or at least come up with with, uh, with discussions there, sound engraver <laughs> around this time. But thank you for uh, joining us, and Merry Christmas to you, and hopefully you have a wonderful Christmas this uh, Friday. 
and hopefully this year this year will be uh we'll uh have have more wonderful moments here and I'll still keep doing this oh when really I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm sassing you, dude. You know, I hit the 30. It's the 30 mark. I, I might as well just stop and um, reach comments real quick. <laughs> no, I'm just being, I'm, truth be told, guys, I'm being on my best behavior because uh, Sally Graver is here now. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a mo for, for when, whenever uh, anybody shows up of the big greats. <laughs> Yes, you're right, Doctor Y. the the geeky The geeky verse has come full circle. <laughs> uh, but it's always as a pleasure. It's, it's great to have you guys here, even when the professor shows up out, out of the blue and to say hello, or even um, Troy or or Mappacelli. It's great to uh, have you guys show up and say hello to the little guys every once in a while. That's nice of you guys. Yes, yes. Please wish everybody wish her a Merry Christmas. So let me do my usual thing. You, I guess, Silent River, since you're here for a while, I guess I'll do my um, usual shindig. You get a taste of, of what I usually do on this stuff. Starting for the time now we're here. Starting for the time now the whole team here. Starting for the time now we're here. Started for the time, our whole team here. Doctor White, by the way, let me know if this is your first time coming to my stream, or this is your, this, or let me know how many times you came to my stream. But I'm gonna read your your first comment here at the top. Talking about romance near Christmas. Step one: Don't watch Hallmark movies. They're getting a bit better. I, I'm I'm not ashamed to admit that I've seen my fair share of a few um. Hallmark movies, they got a little bit better. They still stick to the formula here and there, but they they do kind of do different things with the um with the romance angle. But they're not they're, most most Hallmark uh, movies are not too bad, or at least they're not bad bad. They're just we we all know that they they um they're samey and formulaic. And lay a plus size. Hi, huh, Leia. On oh, top of my list, love the the story since I was a kid. I agree. Brian Gill Martin. Will Aladdin and Princess Jasmine count as opposites, especially since Aladdin is a street rat while Jasmine's royalty? They're opposites in status. Now, as far as like like when it comes to uh personal traits and uh. And perks, they're the they share. A, I think I remember. I recall, if I recall correctly, in one of my streams, I mentioned that that Jasmine wants to explore the other world through Agrabah's inhabitants. She's always been cooped up into the castle. She's a free spirited uh, woman, and she decided to leave the palace to explore Agrabah, the city that that her father governs. Now she got a real awakening as to what what would happen if you uh take a uh, apple out of the blue just because she's royalty. She 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 fails to realize that when she hit her identity, nobody's not gonna notice that she's the princess. They're gonna treat her as a commoner, which she almost lost her arm in, in the um in the process had it not been Aladdin to be there to save her. Of course, nobody would would um. Would have thought twice to um, save Jasmine in that instance because it's a common thing in Agrabah, obviously a very common thing, and mo majority of the time people look the other way. Apathy at its best, sorry, at its worst. But no, they're 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 opposites in status, but they're but they're uh they're equals or say they they're 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 both um share the same interests. Because they're both free spirit. Aladdin's a free spirit because because he's free. He's he's free from the system. He's he really has no home to claim. He just he's got his he's got his own little little uh shack thing in Agrabah, but I don't think he owns any uh 
home anymore. He doesn't have a mother. He doesn't have a father. He doesn't have any siblings to speak of. But he, but he, you know, he's free from the system at this point, just running around, stealing what he can to survive. Got to eat. Got to steal to eat. Got to got to eat to live. Tell you about it when I have the time, basically. And then, of course, yeah, uh, they're opposites in status mostly. You're right. They're they're opposites in status, Brian. Uh, Lay plus has gushing over the Han line. I'm not going to read that comment. But I will. I will keep looking. Dr. Y. Even if Le Leia wasn't Luke's sister, there was no romance between. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it wouldn't have made sense. Even if, like, if, if you remove the aspect that there were twins, or at least you, you remove the, uh, the concept of them being twins, Skywalker t twins. It would not have worked in context because there was never enough time for Luke and Leia to really connect, to really talk. Luke was Luke got separated from the group. He went to Dagobah to train. It was mostly Han and Leia together. It like it's like the it's like the thing that happens with um with certain romance stories that would never have made sense for another character to, to really just go after one character. Excuse me. And not um you know, just go with one character and not end up with the person that they spent the most time with. I was a bit I was a bit taken aback when, when I watched Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, and uh Oh my goodness, I forgot her name, but the princess that um that was supposed to be betrothed to the um the to Sinbad's best friend, the prince. I was like, but wait, wasn't she supposed to marry I was a kid though. I, w I was a teenager, so I didn't understand. I didn't understand. But as an adult now, it's like, yeah, it makes more sense that she would end up with Sinbad because she spent the most time with him on the, on the uh, Seven Seas. Plus, as much as she loved the prince, which he's a good guy, he's a, he's a good and old man. Her heart was free spirited, and sh and to to uh, live with him would just been keeping her. For lack of a better term, caged up. So it, it made sense for her to go out there with uh Sinbad. See here's the thing, Manui. That's the part. You don't care. You just don't care. So why would why would you understand what that what you don't care about? That's the thing. You have to have a caring for it. Sadly, he got his wish led plus size. In the worst kind of way, too. Harrison Ford just Harrison Ford was like the just like the actor who uh played Obi Wan. He didn't care for Star Wars that much anymore. He committed to it, but like like a like a professional. But truth be told, guys, just to tell you guys the truth, right now, Harrison Ford could have cared less about Star Wars. He did love playing Andy in, in the any any films, but he really could care less about Star Wars. That's why he 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 exited out. Dude, you had your chance. If you had Netflix, it was on Netflix for a time, I think. Yeah, the whole trilogy was on Netflix, actually. I didn't even bother watching Tomb of the Jet Dragon Emperor. I think that's the one that remained. They, they removed everything else, but that was the one that remained. And I was like, oh, man. Of all the... um, Now, guys, if y'all going to bring up romance, y'all can bring up romance from comic books, cartoons, TV series... Let's let let's not get let's not stick to movies all, all the time. I, I keep telling you guys this when we 
I say fiction. That means every medium, be it movie, television, cartoon, animated movie, whatever. You bring up all, all the um. You bring up all, all the um the romance that that you like in a fictional medium. Don't just be sticking to um movies now. As I'm walk scrolling down these comments, I better see some um examples from comics and and cartoons. You guys. Brian Gil Martin. A woman caused Stockholm Syndrome since the beast had to earn Bell's respect. She initially wanted nothing to do with him. Yeah, that's true. She she only did to save her father. I that's the one thing that a lot of people tend to uh, overlook uh the original Disney princess. Some some of them do what they do for the love of their family. And family is family bond is strong. She only took his place because he's an old man and he should not be living in that condition. So she's willing to trade places with her father. As as of course as the book as the uh book once um portrayed the beauty back in the olden days. But at the end of the day, it, the Disney movie gave extra context. It gave extra context. She she traded her freedom for his so that's why she was there, but of course, time goes by. That's where they catch feelings. After even after the um, you know, right after the uh, the hero saves saves um, saves a woman from from a uh, <laughs> a sticky situation. That's where they catch feelings. Yep. Sorry. If we get, I will say this lay plus size. I'll read your comment real quick. What took away from Beauty and the Beast is loving someone for who they really are. Bell saw deep down Beast was a good man. If we take film theories, uh, theory at face value, she fell in love with a uh, a teenager at this point. I mean. Let's not kill ourselves. Adam is a pure adult, like a young adult male. Once he tra- changes back, he should he should look look to be about sixteen in, in in that in that look. He the 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 true form of of his. I would say he's sixteen, and she's probably twenty one. Probably, if we're if we're going with um, film theories theory at face value there. Now, if we're going with the movie contest, he's probably around her age, at least like 20, 22, maybe. I like Brian Gilmartin's comment to uh, lay a plus size. Don't judge a book by his cover. I like that. Love at first sight from Anui is kind of a BS concept. It basically, it's basically impossible. And it's largely... Just basic physical attraction confused for actual feelings. Duh. But that does not denounce that it happens, dude. And again, sometimes it uh it has to it has sometimes uh successful results and disastrous results. Mostly disastrous. Going by what you just said there, it's it's because of that. It's because of the infatuation. Like plus, that's true about Snow White. But I'm a softie and I still love that movie and cry at the end. I do not take that series to fool me in life. Bravo. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's not forget Ariel and Eric, but Eric got to know Ariel. Yep. They did get to know each other, even though she didn't t- talk that much. She used the power of body language. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I was I was that kid that actually liked Ursula. 
I don't I don't think there was ever a kid around me that liked Ur- Ursula except for me when I was in uh elementary. When when she did that that did that number poor unfortunate souls, that's where I really loved Ursula. She I was like like you y'all got y'all can have Belle. Y'all can have Ariel, you know. I'm gonna take Ursula any day, man. Like 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 that that's a that's a thick plump woman there. Of course I was the little kid that was kind of a I had a bit of an infatuation towards elderly women. There you go. There, there, there's some true. There's some e true life story right there. Uh, Brian Gilmore delay plus size. What about Simba and Nala? Simba and Nala is, is kind of like the um. I'll put them in the category of best friends turned lovers. They start off. They start off as really good friends, even if even if they were competitive with the pouncing game that they did briefly in the uh, elephant graveyard they were there were, i would i would say again y'all better not make no incest comment in, in the chat y'all keep y'all keep that to yourselves you perverts let's this let's, let's, let's disregard the fact that she's possibly his cousin or, or sister because of how lion prides operate let's disregard that they were good friends Practically next door neighbors. I'm putting that in air quotes, by the way. They were basically next door neighbors. Like, like you, you got that 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 usual uh, slice of life story where where the uh, neighbor falls in love with, with with next door neighbor, the girl the girl next door neighbor. You know the Mac. We usually call them the Mac PC Jean girl too in that sense, but I, I they're next they're the next door neighbor. You know, even even. It's funny because uh, what's also funny is that Zazu even talked about <laughs> betrothal, uh, arranged marriage between those two, and it ended up happening anyways under different circumstances. Lady and Trap is another uh, example of opposites attract. Lady, lady being being the uh, the house dog, whereas Tramp is the um, well, he's a tramp. As the song goes, and of course, through the uh, throughout the course of the of the uh, movie, they they, they uh, end up falling in love because I would say they're, they're basically the same equivalent as Han and Leia. You, you got you got a uh, trap smooth talking lady here and there. He also um, jokes about um, about the house life, living the house life, and in, in in comparison to him. Being a fierce, free spirited uh, life, we also we also get his uh, his his little take on on when the when the humans have a little baby and she gets replaced like the whole that whole bit, but that doesn't deter Lady from from um, her human her human house life that much. At least until at least until the uh, the nanny shows up, then of course. But that still doesn't deter her from um, going back to her home. Well, not to speak about the re- the live action version that that that's on Disney Plus currently because it's un that's an unnecessary live action adaptation. But I like Lady and the Tramp. In short, I really did like Lady and the Tramp, even if I vaguely remember that uh, movie. I can barely catch it from beginning to end, at least. Sad but true, Lay Plus Size. Sad but true back in the days. Owen Lister. Derek is one of the few anime prince characters that are actually interesting and not just the guy that the prince marries at the end. He was also the dumbest prince. Still the still still doesn't change the fact that he's a dumb prince. <laughs> he's He's a Chad, but he's a dumb Chad. <laughs> Later plus that's a grind Gil Martin. I never was a fan of Simba and Nala. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I guess they knew each other since they were cubs. There's not there's nothing wrong with not liking Simba and Nala. But do you like Kiara and Kovu? That's the question.
That's the real question. I think I'm calling with the chat. I think everybody's pushing each other. Uh, <laughs> what did I miss <laughs> while I'm scrolling down your chats? Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm taking the back by by. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm... Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Sound Engraver. Thank you. <laughs> This month, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Loving you guys. Loving it. Oh my goodness. Uh. Oh my goodness. Uh, my newy. I don't even watch the Hallmark Channel. I just heard they're so ungodly sappy. Well, that's the, the, yeah, that's the biggest criticism of the Hallmark movies and usually the Hallmark shows that 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 um inhabits those um that channel. They are sappy. They um here's the thing. The problem with with the Hallmark uh movies and shows sometimes is that sometimes they uh finish they finish um issues way too quickly and the, and sometimes in the most unrealistic ways at times but dudes I will say this nowadays considering what we're getting now in the media them Hallmark channels and the Hallmark channel movies are starting to be more peaceful they're 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 a better alternative than what we're getting in most media Doctor Y says, "Excuse me, I didn't mean to tap my um my mic. I think it's the first time. Mostly, I'm at work when you're streaming or coming home from work. Ah, I think I caught you at the tail end of one of my streams. One of the one stream. I don't know what what it was, but I'm pretty sure you you came in. Oh, uh, that arm confusing you with uh Damien X. You be the oddity there, Matt Nui. I'm sure you have a reason why you like them. You just don't want to point it out that much. Oh, and listen, I always felt the Disney Prince characters never had their own time to shine. You did have a few that did have their moments, like Eric, Philip, Shane, can't name any of There's also Aladdin. He's the main character. Dude, he's a prince too, technically. Once he marries the... um. Once he marries Jasmine, he's now a prince. He, Grant, Sultan wanted him to be uh, his vizier. Want want Aladdin to be his vizier. That's a that's a uh, that's basically the same. Um, that's technically the the position Jafar was in at the time, the vizier. But uh, you forgot about. Um, can't believe you forgot about Aladdin. But yeah, or are you suggesting that Disney should make a um another Disney Prince focused movie like Aladdin or or a uh, Lion King? Is that what you're saying? Or at least when the case of Simba, he's a prince, but he became a king in the end. But my 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 thing is this: is that you're are you asking for a prince focused Disney movie that where he ends up with a girl at the end too? Cause there's not there's not that many out there. It's just um, Aladdin and Simba mostly. Everybody else is princess focused. Doctor Y, Cinderella's press didn't shine until the DVD sequels. Yes, that is true. 
And what's interesting about Cinderella, love or hate the first movie, the sequels were really good, surprisingly. I was hesitant to watch the sequels to uh, Cinderella, but when I got around to watching them, they were surprisingly good. You got a lot of character development with, um, oh, I can't forget her name. It's the redhead uh, sister, stepsister with the button nose, which she's not that ugly. I don't know what, I, don't, I really don't know what those movies were, were playing off of. She is not that ugly. Neither, they're ugly in personality, but they're not ugly in looks. Either way, like, she got character development, which I I was happy for her. I was really happy for, for her to get character development like that. And like her arc was really well handled. She put her difference between her and Cinderella behind them, which was a really unique uh, take when you got around to the sequels. Uh, another good uh, sequel is Aladdin and the Prince of Thieves, which is which is interesting because they got uh, Robert Williams, rest his, rest his soul, to pl to play a genie in that uh, sequel. Now you know, now you know you're in for a good sequel if Robert Williams was was uh, brought back to it. Especially uh, if we're gonna go with with the Disney director video sequels, I will recommend obviously the the Cinderella sequels, Aladdin and the, and the uh, King the King of Thieves, Prince of Thieves. I don't know which one. Just get that one. Return of Jafar is okay. It's just the problem with Return of Jafar is the fact that they let Gil they let Gilbert Goffrey sing as Yago. That and the um the animation was lacking compared to Prince of Thieves. Uh Chorus Lion King Two Simba's Pride, which is really good. Romeo and Juliet, of course. You got Kiara and Kovu. Um, do not watch One and a Half. If you like One and a Half, you saw One and a Half, you like it, that more to the power to you, but I hate it. One and a Half. You can ask me why if you like, but only if you ask me, I'll, I'll tell you why I hate that one. Let me put size to Owen Lister. Agree. I also think John Smith has some moments as well, but I see your point with the male characters. Well, here's the thing. John Smith is not a prince. The real prince was in the sequel, which is the, um, what's his name? Oh my goodness, I'm blanking on names now. I am blanking on names. He's that one, he's that second dude in the, in the, sec, in the sequel. Sound engraver. I love the chemistry between Tony Stark and Pepper Potts. Their opposite personalities are hilarious, but I do see common ground. <laughs> I could not stand Pepper in the second movie. I will say that, but she was a little. She was. She got better in uh, the Avengers. That's only because that was different directing with uh, Josh Whedon. Whereas in the, in the later sequels, she she got a little bit naggy towards Tony, with reason. After a while, once I rewatched all the uh, Iron Man uh, movies, she had a good reason why she was nagging um, Tony all the time, and, and and rightfully so. And uh, she got uh, sadly she got better with with the minimization of her because who in here really likes uh, Gwyneth Paltrow in real life? It's really it's really hard to separate her from from her acting to her real life uh, personality. Yeah, of course. Uh, Harrison Harrison wanted to get out of Star Wars so badly. He he wanted his character to die. No, he did not want him to die in Empire. He wanted him to die in Return. That's what that's what he wanted him to do. He wanted Han to die in Return, not not Empire. He was cool with with, with playing Han in Empire, but he did he didn't die. Uh, he wanted him to die in, in uh, Return. <laughs> that is true, Leia. Plus, I said, uh, Dr. Y, uh, the funny thing about Cinderella is that she went to the ball to have a good time, not really looking to win the prince over. Mm -mm. She was there, she was there to have fun, yeah. 
She just wanted to go. Th- that's what that's what a lot of the uh, a lot of our uh media uh outlets that that are not hip to the woke uh crowd that that really def- outright defend um Cinderella. She was out there to have a good time. She just wanted to go to the ball. As you, <laughs> I'm, qu- I'm quoting one YouTuber, but but that's basically what they're what they always say when every time I hear their their defense of uh Cinderella when when every time the uh the, the social progressives tend to uh badmouth Cinderella the movie itself. It's like they don't understand these stories. They just surface they'll psychoanalyze it and think that they're the arbitrary experts of what they're psychoanalyzing, or at least theorizing. I'm putting that in air quotes by the way. Destined lovers. Brian Gilmart, you ask I kinda wonder where Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mass fit. They're destined lovers. They're they they got reincarnated and they found each other again. They were destined to be there. He puts you like this. I think they were already together before they got reincarnated. They're destined lovers. They're, they're, they're supposed to, uh, they're supposed to be together period. Regardless of, of what, what happened in the, in the, in the original timeline when they got re before they got reincarnated, not in the original timeline way back when, before they got reincarnated, they, they're, they're, they, they, they were destined to end up together period. That's what that's where they fall under. Destined lovers, faded lovers, if you will. Let plus size to Owen Lister true, and I don't have respect for that. He only came back in Force Awakens to die. I lost respect for him then. I here's the thing. Um I still respect Harrison Ford. He got what he wanted. Uh, the whole deal. I just think J.J. Abrams should not have given him that win. And if he wanted to give him that win, I wish J.J. would have written it better to give him that win. Because if I was helming Force Awakens, I will tell you this: Han would have went out in a blaze of glory, and not just Han, Chewie, both him and both him and Chewie would have went out in a blaze of glory, and he would have been gen- he would have been General Solo, not Solo the Smuggler, mind you guys. That's how we have written Han. Um, if I if if uh if the story would would have uh would have had me keep Starkiller base, Starkiller base would have been temporarily shut down. It would not have been destroyed. Han would have sacrificed himself. Him and Chewie would sacrifice himself, sacrifice themselves to hit a key point to stalling Starkiller base. And the the, the my sequel trilogy would have been. To uh, permanently shut down Starkiller Base because that that was like the the super weapon of that series. Only this time it had no flaws, like the Death Star did. You can only slow it down at that point. So that's what that's why I would have uh, if if Harrison Ford wanted Han to die, I would have gave both him and Chewie a big send off by. Stalling Star Killer Base by sacrificing the Falcon. Yes, it would have been sad. Yes, people would have cried. People would have hated me. But that's what I would have done. Instead of oh, he gets stabbed by his emo son, the Darvair cosplayer, as I call him. Dude, that's all you need. That's really all you need. The first movie. You don't really need to you really don't need to get the second movie. Second movie's all right, but it's not really mandatory. Sound engraver. I was just talking with Professor about the stupid romance in Pocahontas sequel. Disney wanted to be historically accurate and have her marry John Roth. That's who he was called. Called John Smith was the love interest in my book. Yeah. Personally, that sequel don't exist anyways. Because Ratcliffe would have been hanged already for his for his failure of uh of what he did at, at with the Virginia Company, he would have been hanged anyways because he failed. So I don't understand how he was able to uh get out of get out of that situation in the sequel. And it's okay, Silent Ray. You don't know comments. You don't know comments. Just stick to Superman and Lois. That's the best power couple in comic book history. There you go. There's there's your example.
Dr. Y has presented me a question. Nightwing and Starfire versus Nightwing and Batgirl. Nightwing and Starfire. I don't I never care for the pairing of 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 uh, Dick and uh Barbara. Never did. It's it's cool. It's cool that people like that, but I always liked uh Nightwing and uh Starfire. Dick and Coriander. Okay, now you guys are, are supplying me the uh comic book romances. I'm trying to breeze through these comments, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Let plus size. Well, for me, still love the romance of Superman and Lois Lane. I just, I just mentioned that earlier. <laughs> From the Donner films, of course. I can repeat every line of that scene at Lois' apartment. But can you recite her little poem when she was flying with him? Oh, and Lister. What kind of couple would you call my characters, Jenny and Gabe, from Be a Blaze? Star Cross lovers? They're no, I will say this. Um, again, just regarding the whole lion uh pride uh operation, the same boat as uh Simba and Nala friends until uh lovers, good good friends turn lovers. There's, there's a name for that, I, I got nothing for, for that one, but that's what that's the category. I've Fit them in, uh, Owen. <laughs> Doctor, why? Oh Lord, the beast is an AC teenager. <laughs> like I said, if you check out Fit Three's uh theory on, on Beauty and the Beast, yeah. <laughs> Now, I will say this, Owen. If you're going to keep them uh, dating while working, if they, they both work at the same um, facility, then they're um, start them off as work friends and um, working couples in a way. Owen Lister again. Sorry, guys. Please tell you like Earth as a villain, not as a crush, dude. I would say both. I, I ain't afraid to admit that. I would say both. <laughs> You're talking to a guy who actually liked the Squid Woman more so than the Mermaid Girl. <laughs> that with <laughs> of the title. Even when she became a human, I I still liked her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we won't speak about that, Leia Plus Size. We do not speak about that. Oh, and Lister. Friends of Lovers, you just summed up half the shoujo anime stories there out there. You're wearing your influence on the sleeve, dude. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, dude. It's okay. It's nothing wrong with that. You make it interesting. That's all you have to do. You make it. You have to make it int interesting. Is Silent Graver still here, or did she take leave already? Oh, I'm. Dang it! It just. It just. It just bounced again. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to pause. Uh, 
Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Owen. She was a bit biased. Well, duh, she's a cat lover. Of course she's going of course she's going to be biased towards her cats. She's a Karen, dude. Come on. You know that. See, I did not know that they did Alice in Wonderland in Hallmark. I do remember Sci-Fi's Alice. If you guys don't know about that one, check that one out. That that was an interesting take on Alice in Wonderland. Uh, Alice, it was a, I think it was a, a yeah, it was a mini series, mini series called Alice on Sci-Fi. Owen, the truth is, Disney know their demographic. That's why the princes get the attention. They changed the demographic. They wanted to appeal to the girls. You should know that already. Come on now, man. It's only Pixar that actually does things differently. Anastasia, yeah, I think she is. And I just, just the moment you said her her name, I just remember her 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 sister name too, Drusilla. Drusilla and Anastasia, yeah, Drusilla. It was was the uh, was the brunette, and uh, Anastasia was the redhead. Layla Plus, you have a point with all the hate going on with social media. Those movies do make you smile, even if the plot is thin. Yep. I'm just saying, man. Hallmark, no. Here's the thing Hallmark movies are Hallmark cards in movie form. They boost up your your feel good, your, your feel feels. You, you see the Hallmark cards, you open it up, you feel good inside, right? That's basically the Hallmark movies to a T, just longer form. But at this point, considering what what happened out throughout this whole year, now that we're crossing into to the next year, these are a welcome pleasure at this point. I only like here's the thing, uh, Owen. Listen, I like Prince of Thieves because it was a fa- it was a father son uh, movie, and I, that's all. I get I get very uh, I get goosebumpsy. I get, I get a little goosebumps whenever time I watch a, uh, a movie about a father and his, and his son. And like I said, when, when we had that uh, Starship Troopers um, rewatch, boys need these type of movies. The uh, the a goofy movie, Aladdin, the Prince of Prince of Thieves. Um, it's another movie about a boy and his father. Fences. Boys need those movies. But let's keep moving. Dude, dude, you need to find that movie. You need to find that movie. That movie is, trust me, that movie is good. For a sequel, good. Who is Thomas Wolfe? Is he, is he, uh, is he the uh, other guy in, um, Pocahontas 2? Time graver. Ha 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 ha. I just told the prof how much I like Nine King One and a Half. But it's been almost 20 years. I may have changed. <laughs> Dudes, I'm telling you right now, if you guys want to hear my take on, on uh, Lion King One and a Half, please ask. <sighs> that is true, Owen. That is true. It is a pilot. That's all it is. That's that's the only reason why it's not really uh it's a it's a decent it's a decent flick. It's decent. <laughs> I still don't count them as princesses, by the way. So no, I'm not going to stretch it for John Smith. He's a hunter and, and, and a frontiersman by by trade. He is not a prince. And neither is Mulan. Mulan's a peasant turned soldier. And Elsa is a queen, not a princess, fool. 
So, no, I'm not going to stretch it for John Smith. But did you care about Steve Rogers and Sharon, Sharon Carter? Or Clint and his family? Did you care about those? I cared about uh, Bruce and, um, and Natasha. I actually, I actually thought that was an interesting uh, take on the romance. Because, truth be told, they don't really do much with Betty in the MCU. They don't even bring her up, let alone mention her. So I was like, you know what? The Here's the thing. The Hulk is Beauty and the Beast, period. Whether you put Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde with a, with a sprinkle of, of uh, Frankenstein, there's an air to Beauty and the Beast because the because women calms the Beast and the Hulk. That's the reason why he changes back. Was when Bay shows up, he changes back to to Bruce, to Puny Banner, Puny Banner, you know. So I was like, you know what? The Hulk needs a woman to keep him calm. So I was okay with him romancing with uh Natasha even though some people thought it didn't make sense I think it did to some extent it did <laughs> well say them in the comments dude don't hide them say them Oh, my re my my rewrite is operating off what what uh what I would have done if I was in the shoes of J.J. Abrams during uh Disney's uh pl here's the thing I would make sure that that Disney Star Wars had a plan, but if, if they want their their oh so loving Death Star, like I said, Star Killer Base would have been the if the the far more advanced Death Star that they always wanted that never. Like for once it did work. For once it had no it barely had flaws. That's why I said Han Solo going out in a blaze of glory, him and Chewie to silence. Not destroy. Silence. The difference the difference between the sequel trilogy and the original trilogy was the fact that the super weapon did not get destroyed in the first movie. That was my plan. The super weapon did not get destroyed in the first movie. It got silenced. Is stalled. Like, even if, if if they sacrifice themselves, the sacrifice would not be would not have been in vain because the imp, because the rebellion, as I would still call them, not the resistance, would have got got away safely and alive, and that was enough to stop Star Killer Base for a while until they can get it operational again. Either that, or I would have uh, just made a whole. Mm. I would have made it like a um, I don't know a drama a war drama maybe no actually you know what if if they had me um as direct control over the sequel trilogy like I told you in, in my in my rewrite I would have had the Outer Rim taking taking uh, force against the, the entire Republic galaxy that's why I, that's why I told that's why I said do you guys remember? I would have the um the Outer Rim come back as the Legion, or at least the not the first order, but they would have been called the Legion of the Outer from the Outer Rim. Like plus size. Yes, I can repeat Lois Pole from Superman. It was <laughs> it was can you read my mind? I just have a way about people. <laughs> I'm not a psychic. I, I I swear I'm not a psychic. <laughs> I'm just ever the observer.
I love the flying scene too. That John Williams score is beautiful. I still play that in my head too. Brian Gil Martin, finally something from video games. Here's a video game romance for you. Lock and Celeste, whom you talked about in your stream before. Yep. Now that's a that that that's a huge case of operas attract, and they developed over time. It, you know how long it took for them to, to develop that love over time? Especially when Celeste was at her at her uh, rock bottom, her breaking point once Kafka start raining hellfire on on the um on the planet. Like, who was on her? Who was at her forefront? Locke. Yeah, I will say I will say this that that was one prominent um uh romance that that built up over time within a story within a game. Now, I haven't played the game to experience it, but I know how their romance turned out. And that was a beautiful uh, love story. Owen oh, Lister. Ursula's human form was more attractive than her squid form. Also, her squid design, I believe, was based on a drag queen called Divine. The drag queen was named Divine, and he had passed two, one, uh, a year ago. Rest his soul. But yet, she is based off Divine from uh, Pink Flamingos, if you will. Uh, still not going to change my mind, dude. She's still attractive to me. For all the right reasons. Yes, tentacles included. No, 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 no. We will not speak the ending of Superman 2. We could talk about Superman 2. We will not talk about that ending. That ending was horrible. We will not talk about the erase the the memory erasing kiss that he, that that he has. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know, Doctor Y. You tell me. I actually like. I, I'm okay with the CGI for for the time. But then again, I grew up on, around that time. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's there's there's some CGI of, of certain shows and, and certain movies that yeah that I can very cringe to, but like Dontopia, not that bad. It's not it's not nowhere near close to any uh, CGI that we use now for for any shows, but it's not that bad per se. <clears throat> Neither do I, but you don't hear me speaking about it, dude. <clears throat> Disney can count them all they want. <clears throat> I don't count them. And I'm not and I'm not going back to um back on that statement either. <clears throat> Lay a plus size. To be honest, the movies did not give enough time to Sharon and Steve. If they had made more movies, perhaps same with Clint. The films did not have time to develop them. True, that is true. But there's also the imagination and the inference that they that they did have chats together. Oh, this is interesting. But here's what's going to make your hair straight. I did feel there was love between Bucky and Steve, not sexual love. Can I say that? It's brotherly love. Of course there's love between them. It's a, it's a brother bond. It's a brother bond. You guys are keep giving me the opposite of track type. That's the thing, Owen. I just said it wouldn't be destroyed. It would be silenced. It would be stalled. It would stop. It would not function because they hit a key point that it needed. Granted, that's still giving it a weakness, but it's but like I said, it's a flaw. It's a flaw 
there, 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 there's no obvious flaws to it, like the like the exhaust ports of the, like say the uh, the Death Star or flying inside Death Star, like it would hit the 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 Falcon would hit a key point that would completely silence it. In other words, basically taking taking the uh taking the thing that 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 makes a gun go off, removing that thing, like 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 take like like taking the um the trigger off. Or the um or the hammer for the um for the gun. That's what I'm saying. You would disable it. Not destroy it. Disable. Sorry. I ended up hitting um almost kind of but I meant to hit uh Brian, but I had to address that too. Uh Brian Gilmar, what about Casey Jones and April in the first TMNT movie? I like them. What's what's so bad about them? I'm kidding. I liked uh Casey Jones and, and April O'Neill. They they were the opposites of tr- Well, they were already built like that anyways. They, if you if the comics are anything to go by or the T V series, that's how they operated with each with within each iteration, each time they were opposites of track. Like Kate, Kate was the me head. April was like the um the nurturing, mm, sm, uh, think before before act type basically. So yeah, I like April and um Casey. Oh no, no, sorry. The question is, how would you defeat it? Uh. See, I haven't thought that far yet, uh, Owen. Now I'm really JJ on that one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to backpedal on that one, but I have to address that. <laughs> well, I played Final Fantasy 15 and I finished it, and I would say Noctis and um and Luna Freya, uh, their romance is not that bad. Even if they were betrothed. I agree with you there on the on the current shows, like the CW shows. The CG is not good, like whatsoever. It really depends on how you utilize it though. See, I've never read the book. That's the thing. I've seen the artwork, though. Donald Toby looks beautiful compared compared to the uh, show. So I will agree with you there. Buffy and Angel, I would call that a tragic love story, uh, Leia Plus Size. But I do love love the coupling. I never was a fan of uh, Spike and, and Buffy. Never did. Never. That was a lust thing. That was never a love thing. That's all he ever cared about was lust. With when it came to um, Buffy, in my eyes, I never did like Sp- Spike and um, Buffy. I always loved Angel and Buffy, and like I said, it, that was a tragic, tragic uh, love story for those two. Yeah, but in my in my vision, it w- it would have the opposite effect. It wouldn't it wouldn't have blown up instantly. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's why that's why I'm that's when I finally uh reread your um story. I mean, read the story your your comment. Yeah, like oh, you mean how I destroyed it in the end? Like yeah, that haven't gotten that far yet. Haven't gotten that far yet. Not yet. I just know it. I just know if, if, like I said, if, if the story, if if they want me, per, if if let's just say if J.J. Abrams was like consultant, and I was the writer, the writer slash director, if he really wanted his Star Killer base that much, and in his in his script, it, it um wanted the Star Killer base to be destroyed. Like, dude, how about you subvert the expectations just this once and just make make it not blow up 
for once, and then let that be the uh, the main the main uh, conflict in the story. Or let's just say the Starkiller base was, was was the base that everybody wanted to claim, and the and the um the whole the whole point throughout the whole um the end point of the trilogy was to if nobody if nobody cannot agree on who can have Starkiller base then destroy it. It's 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 better off not being in, um in anybody's hands. Let's just say let, let's let's or put it like this. Starkiller Base wouldn't have to be a Death Star. It would just be the Star Forge again. Or at least, let's call it that, the Star Forge. If, even if, if uh, Kathleen Kennedy w- would have omitted um, EU canon um, ideas, oh, somehow I would have fit in the Star Forge. Somehow. Believe you and me, I would fit Star Killer Forge. I mean, Star Killer. Star Forge somewhere in the new trilogy. If I probably would put it in name only though anything I'm just saying we all could have came with a better story than JJ, JJ uh, and, and, and Rian oh you talking about Tyga and I forgot the other dude's name I like that romance too yeah I gotta talk about uh, I agree with you Mad Nui Final Fantasy 15 is boring but again I still like the um, Luna Freya and um <clears throat> and uh Noctis uh romance. Finally got to uh Brian Gilmore. Now this is this is one I've been wanting to talk about too. Tommy and Kimberly Pirates. See that that's love at first sight. Uh, um it's kinda interesting how they end up together considering that he, he tried to kill her when he was in mind control. But I did like the romance between Tommy and Kimberly. I also like the uh romance between uh Wes and uh Jen in Time Force. If we were, if we're gonna go with Power Ranger romance, so here's my favorites. Obviously, Tommy and Kimberly, but my top, my top, my top romance is uh, Jen and Wes. Even though she's falling in love with the, with the um, grandfather, the great great grandfather of of her uh, of her bow, her original bow. Um, hmm. What you call it a romance if it's Leo and Kendricks? I think there was a rom- romance brewing between Leo and Kendris in uh, Lost, Ga- Lost Galaxy. There was also Merrick and um, Princess uh, Aisha Shea from uh, Wild Force. And um mm, Can't think of it right now. Those are my three so far. Oh, Angel singing Ashley from us uh, in space. Like those two together. <laughs> Owen, Owen, Owen. Of course, it's an understatement. <clears throat> It's kind of funny because they have better technology that compared to the people who use the technology for Dialtopia. I think I'm at the final, finally at the bottom. I think Sonic River has now. Dude, they're work companions. They're not. They're not lovers. I don't see them as lovers. Ah, yes, Leia plus size. My all-time favorite romance. Aragorn and Arwen from Lord of the Rings. Yes. Come on, guys. You got to give me some book some book romances, too. But I do love those two. Uh, Aragorn being my favorite of the uh, Fellowship. Definitely. And his, and his betrothal of, of Arwen is so beautiful at the end of Return of the King. His, his, uh, his marriage. So beautiful. And yet it happened. But yeah, you and I both agree that that romance was stupid, really stupid. Oh yes, who could forget? Uh, who could who could forget John Stewart and Shire Hall from Justice League, the animated series? I love it. I love it. 
See you later, uh, Owen. Everybody say say goodbye to Owen. He he's gonna go out for a walk. Get some exercise. Good. We all do. We all need to exercise. I've been pumping iron for two days now. Finishing up this year for a workout. I would say the results have been fruitful. Dr. Y. Excuse me. Sorry, I made the hit. The, there we go. Dr. Y. For a single trilogy, I would have another villain group. Either use on Vol or the cis species acting like the Vong. Yeah, it would. I'm saying if we if if we want to go large scale, definitely Star Forge. If we want to go so, uh, smaller scale, yeah, use on Vol. Um. Either way, I still like a uh, user YouTube uh, the YouTuber uh, Cardinal West's version of the sequel trilogy. Which he has thrown in in his uh, rewrite. I still like his uh, rewrite of the prequel trilogy, even though we still you and I absolutely love the prequels. But I like his version of the uh, prequels better. So those are canon. His his rewrites are uh, canon in my in, in my eyes. But yeah. Uh, you know what? I think we said a lot about good romances. Let's get into some bad ones, guys. Give me your, give me your, give me your all-time hated romances. And no, we're not gonna do Twilight. That's too easy. Far too easy. I'll give you mine. Um, I don't think I could ever stand Katniss and uh, Katniss and uh, Peter. Or uh, her and uh, dang, I keep forgetting first boy's name. I don't. <laughs> it's not hated, but it's not worse either. It's it's really well handled, but it's not my favorite. It's my least favorite, actually. To be more uh specific, uh, Candace and, and, and Peter are are my least favorite couple. I don't think they should. Truth be told, I don't think they should have ended up together. At all. Because they were in a war. I don't think she I don't think she should end up with anybody at the end. I think she should just uh try to find a way to have have a way to heal over time. But end up with Peter at the end. I'm not saying that, that, that I'm mad at the fact that she ended up with Peter because she needed a man. No, it's because the stuff that, that Candace went through to, to save Prim, which we all know what happened at the end of uh, Mocking Jay. If any of you guys ever watched Mocking Jay or read it for that matter, I'm like, yeah, like, I don't know. I would have uh, had her not end up with anybody at the end. Just her just trying to work, work out her PTSD if she ever had any. Of course, there's a uh, we're not gonna bring bring up uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, either. That's also too easy. But um, it's a it's a romance that I did not like. It's funny because we all we all we all know good romance at this point, but it's hard to find bad romance. Either. I thought this would have been easier. To find find out what what was a bad romance, I guess any any bad romance comedy would fit would fit in there, right? Like anything Melissa McCarthy has been in, or or uh, <laughs> that's not even a romance, guys. Ray Lo is not a romance. Yes, they kiss at the end, but that's not a romance. Okay, it it, it counts. Let let's go with that. It counts because it's not even set up. It's not even. It doesn't even have a payoff whatsoever. Um, uh, of course we can we we can bring up Nura, Adora, and, and Katra. That's a bad romance. 
It's terrible romance. That's 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 abusive relationship va- uh, validation right there. Didn't like it. No. Didn't like that they end up together. I would rather uh, Adora end up with Bo. And I didn't even watch. Uh, let me read Brian Gilmar. As much as I love Sun Shi Ying from Dynasty Wars, her romance, quote unquote, with Lu, Lu Bei was trash. They barely do anything to play off each other. And her life and Shu is never explored in a meaningful way. Ah. Plus, as you know, I love Chris Evans, but that movie, What's Your Number, sucks so bad. <laughs> Excuse me. Of course, we can all, you know what, you, can, you guys can um, bring up some Nicholas Sparks movies. And boy, do we know about the Nicholas Sparks movies. I have to. Agree. I'm gonna say this. I have to agree with uh, Steve Harvey on this. As much as I don't like Steve Harvey as of now, he had a point when we when we brought the uh, the Notebook, or was it Sinbad? I think it was Sinbad that that brought the Notebook. He said that ain't real. Yeah, I think it was Sinbad that that um that that cracked on Notebook. Sinbad's my favorite comedian, by the way. One of my favorite comedians. My top favorite is Richard Pryor. The Sinbad hit at home when, when he talked about the Nobel. He's like, that ain't real. <laughs> I was like, I agree. But then again, I don't even I didn't even watch the notebook, so <laughs> let alone any Nicholas Sparks movies. My my wife is crazy about those movies though. Cause it's under romance. Like the note like her favorite, I think her top favorite is Walk to Remember, and she used to watch it like constantly when I when I downloaded that uh, movie for her. She would watch it constantly. And I was like, oh my goodness, stop ruining stop ru- ruining Switchfoot for me because that's one of my favorite songs of Switchfoot. And they play that song all the time in Walk to Remember. I was like, can't even listen to that song now. Layer plus size. I think this is more your department, layer plus size. I don't think nobody has no no uh bad romance yet to to list. But Layer plus size says all the hookups in the Walking Dead except Maggie and Glenn. Yeah, I was never that uh open to Michonne and, and Rick being a couple. I almost thought that uh Michonne might have ended up with uh Daryl. A lot of people like to tease Daryl and, and Carol, but I'm like no. They're just good friends. That's all they are, just good friends. Or at least she has this very nurturing Carol always had this nurturing aspect about her. So her pursuing a relationship with um with Daryl would not would not have worked. Her grand she she had a number of relationships going or at least growing. Uh there was that time where she uh Instead of, instead of Michonne being the one, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> instead of Michonne pursuing the romance with Ezekiel, it's Carol that that pursued the romance with Ezekiel in the show. Whereas in the comics, it was uh, Michonne that uh, that slept with uh, Ezekiel. There's nothing wrong with hating love at first sight. What I'm saying is that don't don't pretend that it doesn't exist in real life. Brian Yo Martin. Like I said, it usually ends in disaster because like uh Mad Nui has said, it's affection it's it's affection and infatuation that drives them, not love. That's why uh Romeo and Juliet didn't work. Because it's mostly infatuation between those two. But back to what I was saying about Carol. Carol had a string of uh, lovers, as I like to call them. Can't remember them, though. She had a lot. 
in the uh, show. But as far as like romance, I hated that um, Sasha banged uh, Abraham. That was stupid. That should not have happened. Um, excuse me. I'm thinking. There was also a. Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, Carl and uh, what's her name? Eden. Enid. I could not stand Enid. I was so glad when she died. Sadly, they tr they tried their best to um to to try to give a good send off to people I did not like in The Walking Dead. It just it just did not work. Like when Enid died, I was like, "Oh, good, she's dead. Good, can't stand her. She's dead." Then Tara died. Like, "Yep, good, she's dead. Couldn't stand her. Not because she's a lesbian or anything like that. She's she just she annoys me." But why did why or why did they not kill Rosita? I was like, "This bitch, excuse me." <laughs> Oh, you guys cannot imagine my fury towards Rosita. Oh my goodness. Dude, we're talking about bad romances. Man, I'm 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 getting the sense that, that you're 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 having trouble belonging here. Or that you have no I think you're longing to find a place to belong. Lab plus size. I can't stand those romance where the woman's torn between two lovers. Stop being selfish. You only love one. Yeah, love triangles. There's some, you know what? Let's get into that, actually. Love triangles suck. Period. They just do. They they, or at least, not many people have actually came with effective way, came with effective way to, to write a love triangle. And the only reason why because they want one part of the story to go, but you know, us the viewers, us the viewers want want one way to go, but but the um but the writer or or the creator wants another way to go and <clears throat> sometimes I will say the love triangles tend to be a bit um, pointless <laughs> I'm going to need more context there Dr. Y a little bit more context But yeah, love triangles, I would say they're pointless because they don't really uh, put up the good chemistry enough to, to warrant a love tri triangle. Sometimes I, I think, I think, I know they put it up for, for most, really the purpose of a love triangle is mostly a, a um, drama. It's just drama. That's all it is. <laughs> that's that's the reason why you want people tend to put love triangles in there like Legend of Korra no reason for them to um, put a love triangle in that series with uh especially in the first season with um Asami Korra and and uh and Mako <laughs> I would say Mako and, and Asami I, yeah, you know what? In fact, let's go with that as another uh, bad romance. But yeah, like that love triangle was tacked on. Like I, I like I like Mako and Asami nicely. They 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 tend to hit it off pretty well. 
But then again, my my stance on, on Legend Core has changed over the years. And I have my own rewrite of that series too. Uh Lead Plus Size. Wanda and Vision about to have their own show. Did you care for their sto- love story in the MCU? I felt it was a bit rushed. Like they're lovers in the cons, so make it happen in the movie. Here's the thing, Leia Plus Size. <coughs> Excuse me. I like their romance. I like how they bonded with um with cooking. So think about it like this. There is they provide you evidence in Civil War to suggest that they could potentially be a couple. <coughs> So here's the thing about about movie to movie. The setup right there was 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 them cooking and, and having a um a bit of a, a, a connection and bonding moment. Then you got the um then you get to uh, Infinity War. Something w- would have happened in between those movies for them to to get together like that. So when you think about it, um. Even if the if they were on both sides of the fight, on, on different sides of the fight, <clears throat> they were still um, they were still having that connection going. Even if she did drive them through through a floor, through through several floors, through a through a building. So when they got together, I was like, "Yeah, I saw it because they already set it up in Civil War." So of course. Over time, they would have they would have uh, saw each other outside and got together, and they did and they did make make mention in, um, in Infinity War that Vision left Tony Stark's side after Civil War, sometime after Civil War. So I believed it. I believed that they would have ended up together because Vision 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 is is his own entity. That's all he is, but he can. He can find emotions sometimes. He 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 he's he's be, began to to um to conjure up emotions that he would never have thought thought he could uh, have. Think about it like this, especially when um I'm trying to remember. I think it was in Civil War where where uh Tony questioned him about what happened um. Tony asked him that that he that he could uh, potentially miss things, like the the fact that when um when Vision took a shot at uh at Falcon, end up hitting um end up hitting uh War Machine. Tony asked him, "You actually dis- get distracted?" And he says, "Yes." So anything's possible when it comes to Vision, but like I, but in short, what I'm saying is I can bleed. Their uh, their their romance could happen. Grant, yeah, you can make the argument that it was off-screen romance, and that's what it was. It really wasn't off-screen romance. <clears throat> Here's the thing: where I'm ups- where I'm very upsetting about it, even though it's an off-screen romance. Like I said, it was set up in Civil War. They they had a a close bonding at that point. However. However, in Infinity War, they are selling those two being a couple together really well. So I end up saying, like, you know what? That works for me because they are. I rather I rather them selling it to me really well than just them having an off-screen romance and having zero chemistry because there was chemistry between Vision and Wanda, definitely. That being said, I'm not seeing one division. I've already made my stance on, on what where I'm, where, I, where I'm at with the MCU. Excuse me. I 
think the chat just bounced up yet again. But I'm gonna read Dr. Wise uh sorry, let me get back to it. This one, this is the one I want to read. There's a book series released near the first movie that gave Simba and Nala a son. The creators of Lion King 2 knew nothing about the book series and gave him a daughter. Oh, you're talking about um Lot the King's Guard, I think it's called. The one with uh what's his name? Hmm, keep keep forgetting his name. There's a lot of art for him, but uh yeah, I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Brian Gil Martin. If there's one thing I can't stand in fiction, it's drama for the sake of drama. Love triangles fit that bill nicely. And like I said, it only works if, if it uh if it's if it's well established. But if it's just there for drama, then it, it fails. Yeah, the lion guard. Yeah. Yeah, Lion King it's weird. I'm not even gonna go into that one. Not that much. It's weird. And yet it's funny how the Lion King is that weird when it's the one that made Disney the most money in years. The highest grossing uh anime film that Disney ever made. Next to uh Little Mermaid. Dude, whatever you say, I'm not I'm not this is not the that's not what the stream is about. We're talking about romance. We're not talking about if you wanted to talk about that, you should have been at the at the hero designs stream. But you weren't. Let it go. Yeah, like I said, I, it's the same thing with with, uh, with with Natasha and um and Bruce and sh one thing I gotta say about the uh, the MCU, you can say what you will about the romance. Sometimes it works for me because it's set up. Now, if, like I said, here's 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 what here's where I will say it would have failed for me, <coughs> um, especially with with, with uh, Sharon and um, Steve. If they popped in, if they, if, let, let's just say this: if if Captain America Winter Soldier started off without Sharon Carter connecting with uh, Steve Rogers, Rogers <laughs> I'm, I'm, I will say this: if, if Winter Soldier started out without Sharon Carter. And Civil War came came up, and Sheriff Carter just bath into existence and gave Steve a kiss. Then I'll have a problem with it. That's what I would say. Then I would have have a problem with it. That's the only time I would say that. Same thing with Natasha and um and and uh, Bruce. If they didn't have that connection, in, um, say the first Avengers, because they did have that connection, sort of. And then it got submitted more into uh, Age of Ultron, and didn't get. I would say that that yeah, I have a problem with like like so, like like you didn't have that set up, or at least elaborate more into into uh, Age of Ultron, and yet when we get to Infinity War, you have that that uh that disconnect that that sort of um dour uh moment between him and, and Natasha. I'm like, wait, when did that happen? So what I'm saying is they, they build it up bit by bit. You guys are asking way too much. Like sometimes less is less is more. Less is less is more. Or there's more with within the uh, interactions between the characters. Like I said, Wanda and Vision bonded over cooking. And that speaks volumes to how they will end up together in Infinity War and so on and so forth. Steve and Sharon bonded because they're both agents of Shield, or at least she connect. She kind of connected with him when she was pretending to be his uh his next door uh neighbor in the apartment. But she, 
but you you see that there was some sort of a uh, connection there between him and Sharon, especially when you get to the end of uh of wearing a soldier. She's the one that believes her, believes in him when, when he te- when he tells when he gives that speech about uh shield being compromised by Hydra. She's the one that that, that um that sides with him. Remember that. And then you again, you get to a uh, civil war where they had that connection more, and now they still have to deal with a kiss. Which again, like I said, where the hell was Sharon in Endgame? Where was Sharon in Endgame? Because that's the that's the only thing where I where I get pissed off at is because they just set they just set up Sharon and Steve in Civil War and they don't commit to it. That's my issue. That's my issue with uh with in game right there. That's a that's a minor nitpick on that one. As far as like uh or let's go with uh Oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his name. Ant Man and um Wasp. Hope Summer Hope Pym What's her name? Hope? Right? Hope Hope Pym and Scott Lang. Their romance was developing in the first movie and got better in the second movie. And it and it uh reached its conclusion in Endgame. So like I said, the MCU has a has a good way of uh setting up their romances little by little. And there's always a payoff in each movie at times. Is what I'm saying. So when when our time time I can't, when we get to the uh, romance in the MCU, it's like, eh, they're fine. Like I'm like, any diehard fan would like to see the the original parent, but like, eh, this works, that works. Like if you really sit down and take the time to look at it, it works. But that's all I'm gonna say about that. Yes, yes, we know Mad Nui loves to be a robot. I'm a robot too. I kid, I kid. I think that's what we'll cover for next section. No, it was established it was established in, in the first Avengers. There was a there's a bit there's a bit There's a bit of banter between her and, and Bruce in the first Avengers movie. So it was set up. Didn't come out of nowhere, dude. <laughs> Unless we're watching the movie differently. No, she hasn't. And she doesn't have a thing with Hawkeye. She, Hawkeye's married, dude. Come on now. She's more of a she's more she's more of a sister to um to Hawkeye. Then again, I I almost found it believable where where, where there might have been a, a a sort of romance between her and Tony and uh, Iron Man two. So there's that. But there there was a t- there was a tease between uh Natasha and Bruce in, in the first Avengers movie. Now, whether it, whether or not she was pretend pretend for a job, that's up to you guys to decide. Uh, you know, I think that might might be uh, another short uh, stream for us. I think I I ran out. Unless you guys can give me some more stuff to um talk about books, movies, games. So I would never uh call Dante and Trisha romance. They just work friends. That's all they are. Even if he does hit on them every once in a while, they're not really I would say uh him and Lady might be might might be an item here and there. But they could be work friends too. Or let's not forget Daryl Hicks. Daryl. Dwayne Hicks 
and Ellen Ripley from uh, Aliens. There was a romance building up between those two. And uh, Aliens went when he uh, teaches her how to use the uh, the pulse rifle. Then become then become a romance until then become a complete romance. But there was something going on there. You you guys know that. Then there was also um, Drake and uh, Vasquez. Though though I was still say those were work friends, but kind of gives the idea that there might have been something going on between those two. If you know what I mean. <laughs> and you are allowed you have every right to think that it didn't work for you it worked for me then again I'm just like my my, my views on, on romance is, is uh is different than everybody else's like I said it, you're right it, if we had a, a, a three step thing with, with, with her and Steve then yeah it might have worked with you. But I was like, eh. When they kissed, I was like, yes, finally. Yes. And like I said, I, w- I wish she would end up, I wish she would end up with her at the end of, of Endgame. That, I think that's probably, probably what, where you would have been happy right there, uh, Leia Plus Size, if she, if she was the one he would end up with at the end of uh, Endgame, instead of Peggy. Oh my goodness, I cannot stand that. How you just go back to end up with Peggy like that. I just uh you know what? I'm I'm a I'm I'm not gonna elaborate on that. Um ooh, ooh. <laughs> Did anybody remember that Hercules and Xena was a thing? Before Xena and Gabrielle? Hercules and Xena was almost a thing. In his own series, when she shows up, but then can I talk? We cannot talk about Hercules Zena and not talk about Zena and Gabrielle. I'm surprised you guys didn't even bring those two up. And most of and many of you guys here are Zena and Hercules fans. But yeah, like like Zena and uh, Gabrielle start out as friends. Zena had her own little male lovers. Here and there, she also had female lovers like Alti, um, what's her name? I think his name was Lao Ma. I think it's yeah, Lao Ma. Well, Lao Ma was was kind of a teacher student relationship there, but Alti was also <laughs> Alti was like a teacher student toxic relationship. Dude, check those out, Doctor Y. Those are really good shows. If you like, if you like uh, Hercules in a Superman uh, setting type s- storytelling, with Kevin Servo as the as the uh, titular character, have at it, dude. Have at it. But um. <laughs> Let plus I see like Aries wanted Xena as bad as Hercules. Was <laughs> they were lovers for a time. He just he let's just say he's he's a stalker boyfriend at this point. They they, they made uh they made Aries a stalker boyfriend who wanted her back. He wasn't abusive. I don't think he was abusive towards uh. Zena, but he but he was that one uh, boyfriend that just that just couldn't take the hint. Like, hey, I'm not into I'm not into you anymore. Go away. We're done. You know how that is. Um, there's also Zena and Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. And you wonder how could she? And I will answer, dude. He's played by freaking Kerr Urban. Come on now. Who also played Cupid? 
and Hercules. And Zena. Carl Urban was in a lot of stuff, guys. I, I tell you that right now. He was in a lot of stuff. And God rest the rest of um the actor who played Ares. That dude was that dude was a beast. But um mm. oh, I cannot forget about uh Sabrina and Harvey from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Though Harvey's kind of like the uh the clueless boyfriend at times. He's kind of like a he's got his charm, but he's more of a uh, clueless boyfriend. They start out as friends though, but they become lovers in the end. We will not speak of the the Sabrina show that's on Netflix. Oh my goodness. I was I was I was like I was jiving with it for a while, but I'm like, when Theo became Theo, I was like, oh no, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm not doing this. Mm -mm. <laughs> but are we really watching it for the practicality, dude, at this point? Are we really wa watching... Xena Warrior Princess for the practicality. You're talking you're talking about a lady who can freaking who can freaking shorten your breath by two by two jabs to your neck. And can fix it by, by twisting her fingers around it. I tried that move one time. It doesn't work. I kid, I kid. Don't worry, guys. I didn't kill nobody. <laughs> I swear I didn't kill nobody. No, but like, yeah, like, like, I, I'm, I'm so, I'm not, I'm not going to be discussing practicality and armor anymore, cause I'm gonna tell you right now, no matter what kind of armor you give a female character, the SJWs are still gonna get pissed off about it. So, I'll tell you this, guys, right now, if you want to put boob armor or boob sockets on your character, have at it. Have at it. If you want to put them in bikini armor, have at it. Show these, show these people what for. Really now, just really, really show them that you know what. We're not going to take any of your any of your antics or your criticism. I'm going to design my female characters how I want. I'm designing them for me and for anybody who likes the characters the way they look, not for you. That's how I'm gonna. That's how I'm designing my characters as we speak. I'm like I'm design. I'm designing my female characters for me, and for those who like the stuff I like, or at least who likes my characters the way I design them. Period. At this point, because I'm not. I'm not satisfying your your ego and, and your affirmate affirmation narcissism. Frankly, I like the female uh, Mandalorian armor. And I even watched the Mandalorian. Mm. Deadpool and Vanessa. Speaking of couples, Deadpool and Vanessa. Now that was an interesting uh, coupling. Ah, <laughs> uh, of that, I agree with you. Finally, Man Nui. It's still armor. Armor doesn't stop being useful when it accommodates the, their chest. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> and you know, Dr. Y. <laughs> I like this. I prefer boob armor to bikini armor. Practicality and fashionable. <laughs> hey, that's what use that's what the stream about. Like you guys you guys are free to like what you like. Uh, bro. Brian, I'm still waiting for any of these these, these cuck holes to, to, to look up my, my work and still question that. And like it's one one thing one one of the reasons why I would love to uh, get into uh to be an art teacher. If somebody ever threw that question at me, I'll slam a book called Anatomy right in front of them and I, 
a, a medical anatomy book, and I'll and I'll slide over to him and say, "Look that up, and look up how organs function." Because you obviously don't know how organs function, nor you do you know where the organs are. So there you go. Seriously, these people think that the, the organs are these very solid rock-like uh, things in our bodies. They don't know how the organs work. Organs are very flexible. Not new. I doubt anyone reading Red Sonia gives a squat about it being practical or not. We're talking about we're basically talking about a woman who could only marry somebody if they beat her in combat. But she's also good in combat. She can beat just about any dude that that kept that come across her. Tell me, is that practical? <laughs> Surprised you guys never answered anything about my uh Zena and Zena, uh Sabrina and Harvey. But whatever. You know what? I think that's that's where I'm gonna stop it right there, guys. Um sorry. Brian Gilmartin. <laughs> Think it, man. Brian Gilmar, I know for a fact that SJWs will hate my artwork. Heck, I will relish in it because it will be validation for me. <laughs> all bu- all publicity is good publicity, right? <clears throat> man, Nui. That complaint never made any sense because they aren't that thin. No, they're not. That's the thing. It's just the fact that they, they'll find any um they'll just make up any kind of uh mental gymnastics to, to, to criticize something. It's like me be, being being a furry artist. They'll find something to complain about that. Well, why'd you give a wolf girl boobs? Because I want to. Yeah, but but you don't give her give her teats. And they Teats look gross. What's your point? I'm not. I'm not in the business of, of making an eight titted woman. That's not. That's not. That's not my uh, my art business. You can find that anywhere else. Be my guest. Why is it that I need to do that too? I'm not a part of collective, man. Go away. You know, they'll find anything to complain about. Anything. The damn they're trying to take over the damn uh, furry community. From what I've seen thus far. Can't I'm only making claims though. I can't really substantiate the um the evidence. I'm just saying that there might be some SJWs might be invading the furry community. Which is funny because furry community is not well liked in any community. <laughs> or at least the furry community is not well liked outside of any community whatsoever. And I don't know why they want to take over that other than be degenerates. Excuse me. But they already are degenerates, so why would they need to be part of the furry communities? Dude, stop make stop making things unfun. Leave the leave the booby snake women alone. Let us have our fun. Come on, dude. They're aliens. They don't need to make sense. <laughs> it's like it's like taking the boobs off of Medusa's from um God of War. That it defeats the it defeats the purpose. Distraction. Duh. We all we all know boobs boobs are distractions. Okay, I'm 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 losing myself, so let me end the stream right here, guys. Uh I'd like to thank everybody for um showing up. 
I did not think that AP would show up. And surprisingly enough, I did not think that Silent Gray would, would, would make a guest appearance. That was out of the blue, but welcome. So let me go over what's going on for this schedule, like everyone else. Um, I believe the Catholic Bible Geek has something. Has a no. No, I think tonight is Mappacelli's uh rewatch of Charlie Brown Christmas, or is that tomorrow? I believe. No, it's Thursday. It's got to be Thursday. <laughs> Yes, dry. Sorry, Doctor Y. I don't know why I keep. Every time I try to type up your name when when I, when I chat with you in, in streams, I I tend to I tend to to um to type a dry, but then I correct myself. <laughs> Sorry, dude. But uh, yeah, Medusa makes makes a session, but whatever. Let us have our fun. Anyways, uh, I know the professor is probably streaming Katora again tonight. But there's some there's somebody there's something going on today with the Pacellis, I think. Either Ma or Papa Celli. Can never keep track of these rewatches. Tomorrow is Green Lion Girls uh gaming stream, Hitman, Songs with Birdman with uh H. Boomer and Daryl Heron. It will be uh Batman Returns, I believe. Thursday, guys, I will be ha having a Chris Christmas Eve fun stream. And like I said in the Facebook groups, I am leaving the door open for anybody who wants to speak as a guest on my stream. If you have the time to speak, it don't have to be an hour. It don't have to be 50 minutes. It can be just for five minutes. You can just speak to me for a while and just go and, and prepare your uh Christmas gift gifts and stuff or, or last minute decorations whatever same thing with, with the uh, stream you can have me in the background if you like and and just and just listen to me ramble as usual and that that's what you guys do most of the time when, when it comes to the uh the stream my streaming uh shows that's fine but like I said Thursday fun stream for Christmas Eve, you guys want to show up? Show up. But I'm just... I ain't got nothing to do on, on Christmas Eve other than, as usual, spend time with my wife. But I could do that all day and all evening, of course. Um, Later on that day, like I said, will be a rewatch. I believe it's Charlie Brown Christmas with uh, Ma Pacelli over Nair's Network. Um. Actually, you know what? I think tomorrow is the Genre Boy uh, rewatch with uh Papa Chelly. Friday will be uh something with Fan Mail or maybe uh no. I don't think anybody's doing anything on Friday because Friday is Christmas. Merry Christmas, by the way, everybody. Just in case I don't tell you here, I'll tell you at the stream this Thursday. But Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, I think no nothing's going on 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 um uh, Christmas. Because everybody will be celebrating Christmas. Saturday, definitely, uh, Big Al will be doing a, a rewatch of uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Sunday, I have nothing planned, as usual, until further knows what the rewatch is. But we are playing uh, a rewatch of uh, Blade Trinity, me and Owen and, and the Immaculate Travis scribe, Ivan Mendoza. Hopefully. Eloise Doll. You came in late. I'm about to uh, cl close out the stream right now, but um, yeah, sorry, dude. You're, you're kind of late, and just letting you know. I know you. I know you. Um, I know you know me through uh, Twitter. I cannot get into my Twitter right now. I'm waiting for a new. To, I'm waiting on to get a new laptop so I can fix that. So, sorry if I haven't uh, shared the streams on Twitter, but. Uh, I'm glad that you showed up. Sorry it had to be at the tail end. Sorry about that. But uh Oh Matt. Why you gotta be so mean to fan man? Don't tell me in the stream. But um 
like I said, Sunday, I got nothing going on. But it, but I will be attending study hall on Sunday. And of course, me and, and Match will be doing our own We Watch. Uh, I do believe it might be something. Moe. Last week we did, last Sunday we did uh, Alita OVAs. So are we, dude. Takes one to know one. Takes one to know one. <laughs> You're just mad that, that he's the bigger asshole. Anyways. Monday will be Sunday. Will be Monday Night Muse. Sound Engraver's uh, stream. Monday Night Muse. Please check her out on Monday. And I got nothing to do for next month. I do have uh, topics, but I'm going to take a, a, a small break for now. That's all I'm be doing for, uh, for for January, the beginning of January. I'll be taking a small break. So I, so Wolf Commander Rounds will be returning, but not yet. Because I got to get my affairs in order real quick. So just be uh, aware of that I will be, if if anything come up, I will definitely uh post it on both uh groups. So you guys take care and Merry Christmas. So again, attend if you like. If you if you can't, leave a shout out. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Hit that bell. So you guys won't miss it this time. You can catch me on on stream. Tease that notification, if you will. But yeah. Thank you guys for showing up. This has been your Wolf Commander, Wolf 10. Signing out. Ow!